Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Big Lee's Worlds podcast. It is I, your host, Big Lee, coming to you live from the Boom Boom Room right here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And tonight I am honored and privileged to have my good personal friend with me, Mr. Hollis Giroux. Hollis, how's it going today? Man, today, like, like I was just saying, like, minus, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of, lots of, you know, people dying and stuff. Minus all that, like it's it's beautiful outside. I'm I'm okay. I'm doing just fine. The world's resetting, my friend. Like I was telling you, man, man, like it's uh, it's ooh, like you like you remember how they had the um like they, they say the Simpsons is like telling us you know drop a little ribs in life and shit like that. Like the Simpsons said it first, and all <laughs> this shit's happening like with Trump being president. And you know they had the little coronavirus shit so so long ago. Like minus all that, maybe the Avengers weren't fucking lying. Like oh hey, the globe is gonna fucking mm-hmm. you know start resetting itself. Like the globe, like Mother Earth is fucking Thanos. Like poof, motherfuckers, and you're gone. Like, Dude, that's I'm, what I'm doing. I'm just waiting for that one. I, the biggest thing from the Simpsons I remember is uh-huh. uh, I guess it was maybe an Easter episode or something. And at the uh-huh. end of it, like the ground just opens up. And the steps just go to hell, and they start playing ACDC's Highway to Hell, and everybody just oh starts walking down to it. Like that. <laughs> that's what I'm wow. waiting to see. I'm just like, just like, I, just that's some totally rent. From, that's totally for you, shit too. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one big thing like I remember from The Simpsons, right? Because oh, it's just man. like. Oh. So I guess the first big question, man, is you missing the wrestling yet? It, everyone's missing it. Everyone is missing it, man. Like you, you, you can't. You, we all miss it. Stop pissing and pouting about it. And it'll come back to us. So you got a, we, a, a great friend of mine. A great friend of mine. I'm sorry to cut you off there, but a great friend of mine. He he always used to tell me, you know, you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. Like every time we, I was working on my car. Your friends with George and, Michael? No, I said every time I was working on my car, and um. Uh, something was going wrong with it. We couldn't figure out why. Like, no, 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 we'll get it. You gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. I mean, essentially, we got it. it. Took a few times, but like, it's a well. I think we should in, like try not, you know, try to flatten the curve as much as possible. Um, please stay inside, people, so we can get back to doing the shit that we all like to do, which is raise fucking hell, or record uh, these podcasts in person, like this was supposed to be done. Oh, for sure. For sure. So when was your last match? match? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Last, we got to get the that. The last K-Show. Was it the last K-Show? Because I remember... Last K-Show. Because I remember I seen you the next night, the Glory Pro, in uh-huh. St. Louis. Oh, that was a bad and, day. Yeah, I remember you telling me it was... A, I had a great day that day. Oh, I saw it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, like, kid, I was a kid in the candy store. Anytime I, I get to be live... Like, anytime I get to be live front row for a Nick Gage match... Mm-hmm. Like I'm like a kid at the candy store, and if yeah. you thought it was, I was crazy then, you gotta see it like one of his deathmatch tournaments he does in Chicago. Dude, I wish I could have saw your face when uh, who was that? KLD? It was a KLD that went to the table because I went back and saw it. I was trying to get a better. Spot. Yeah, I was trying to see someone. <laughs> see, I was late for that because I was just standing uh, inside because I was thinking, right. oh, it's just gonna be a quick spot outside, and they're gonna come back in. Well, uh, dude, uh, quick spot my ass. They were out there for a whole five damn minutes. I know, right? So I was like, finally, I was just like, well, I'm going to go back in there. I actually Man. rewatched the replay of it uh-huh. and uh, see me kind of like run back in there. Well, but, uh, like I I told- say, well I'm a mark to wrestling like everybody else. I want to see some good shit, too. And, um, well, I, I, I want to see the spot, but my ass is too short. So... <laughs> Couldn't see over everybody. I couldn't see the damn table on fire. So I said, "You know what? Well, fuck it. I'll go. I'll watch the replay." But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna try to, you know, speak by one of y'all spots here. So uh, you don't want to hear the you, fact yeah. that I was able to uh, stand in the back and still see fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, that's actually... how I'll jump on your shoulders. Hey, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I was surprised to see you there. I didn't know you was gonna be there. I wasn't like I. The plan was like I was like after the window broke, I was like, no, nah, I'm going home. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know what? I'm like, you know what? No, I'm gonna go watch the fucking wrestling. You know, I don't get to sit back and enjoy 
Like as much as I would like to, you know, other other kind of wrestling. You know, it's always right. trying to get yourself booked on shows and shit. But a lot of us, you know, I mean, at least I don't see it, but a lot of us forget to sit back and just, you know, just sit back and enjoy it, you know? Like, enjoy watching your your, your peers, you know, do, you know, strut they shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and sit back and learn from it, and what can you take out of it? Like, I'm enjoying that aspect of it, so I mean, I'm happy, like, you know, it's like, man, I wish I could be out here too, but I'm like, I'm actually sitting back and enjoying this. Like, I know that motherfucker right there. Like, <laughs> that mother like, let's k Fave here for a little bit, but that motherfucker right there, I don't like. Fuck that dude. Right. You know? <laughs> But yeah, no, like, yeah, like, we should all sometimes just sit back and, you know, like, if you can go to an indie show in person, go in person and sit back, like, as a worker, as a worker, go and just sit back and, like, and, and watch other people do what we all doing, you know? Well, see, that's the thing is, like, I've I've never gave up the love of indie wrestling once I got back mm-hmm. into it a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And to an extent, like, some of the indie shows I've gone to, like, especially when I was more part of CCW, was going mm-hmm. to these shows and it was like, and I've, I've talked to you about this before about some of your friends that I met over in Illinois, but, uh, mm-hmm. they would mm-hmm. come like all intermission, they would come up and try to like sell themselves to being booked. And it's like, I don't think you understand really why I'm here. Like I'm here to see a handful of people that do a style that y'all don't do. And mm-hmm. the rest of them I'm just here to laugh at. And y'all are some of the ones that we're here to laugh at. Huh. So it's kind of like uh pulling some dinner for smokes type shit, right? But uh, yeah, because uh, if I remember right, it was supposed to go uh that next weekend after that one, you were supposed to go down to the mean streets of Cooter, I believe it was, oh, yeah. and yeah. wrestle. Hey, I mean, I have mean, you ever been to Cooter like... to wrestle, or just Cooter in general? <laughs> Not that Cooter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a cooter barbecue up here in Kansas City. <laughs> oh, my oh but you took that but somewhere no, else that I was not, I was taking yeah. it somewhere else, but that's fine. Yeah, I mean, shit, it's been a minute since I had that cooter too, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been, I think it's been just about everybody right about now in this, uh, whole pandemic. Yeah, as, as they should be, but you know. Right. Like, ain't, ain't nobody gonna tell you, yeah, you perverted bastards. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I asked a question about that on Facebook. What's that? I sure did. Like, I said, why y'all over here, you know, hey, social distancing, social distancing, you know, and some of us are essential, but I want, I want, want to make a little joke out of it. Are y'all social distancing when y'all get home or are y'all still sleeping together? Hmm. <laughs> Dude, did, did I send you the video? That, 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 that's where the, uh, pause comes in at, and you gotta really think back, cause I, I've sent a couple of videos to you, uh-huh. and it's, you know, some that we probably, even though this has a parental advisory, we still can't talk about. Uh, right. But uh, there's a video I shared. I think I sent it to y'all. But uh, and I think it was, if I remember, the strip club was in Peoria. And uh, it was like a drive through strip club where uh, you would basically go up to an ATM, like, and uh, put your card in. And you would get to see the stripper on a TV screen do a little dance. Bro, what kind of shit is that? <laughs> How much was that? I'm curious. I'm very curious. Because uh, the guy, did, I, I just seen the guy put the card into the ATM and apparently like it. Damn porno. Really? Right. <laughs> like, 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 really? And watch the porno. Well, like, like apparently there was doing. a thing that once you put the card in, it was like, so, yeah, I don't remember if the, if the guy <laughs> hit a button on the ATM or if the guy was close to the TV hit a mm-hmm. button, and made money fall from the sky while she rolled around in it. Oh, wow. I was like... And this is in Peoria, Illinois? Yes. Peoria, Illinois. I bet you the tunnel to China is in that damn town. <laughs> do y'all have strip clubs in Kansas City? Yeah, we do, but they're not... Um, uh, you know, like, you know, state of Missouri, like, you can't... Uh, really do the whole touching thing anymore and they gotta be fully clothed now. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't know that. What do you mean? You didn't know that. I didn't How know did that. How did you not? You did you really? What about yeah. you did a strip club? <laughs> Shit. So 
<laughs> well, here's the next a, question, please. <laughs> no, no, not that. No, uh-huh. It's uh, so where the one in East Cape is? That's in Illinois. Right. Yeah. So I only know oh, of so one. Oh, yeah, you, cause you, oh, okay, right, I see, I see. And that's what so I only know that. of one right. strip club in Missouri, and that's over in Poplar Bluff, and it's the Poplar uh, Bluff Pony, uh, but I've never been there. Hmm. Yeah, because it's, for what I remember, it's kind of out in the, out in the sticks to where <laughs> I may be, I may be white, but I'm not that white to go out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness! Because <laughs> uh, I oh, mean, man, I, I mean it's, but yeah, I didn't know like in the Kansas City side. Bro, if, uh, hang on, Chaffee is out in the six, but damn. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I I'm gonna get to the Chaffee. I'm gonna get to the Chaffee. <laughs> I'll get to that a little bit later. Oh my god! I, I just want to make sure I'm a little careful about how we talk about some of these places because I don't want you to. Oh, no, uh, I, no, I don't want no, you to I'm get any, oh, any okay, heat. So let me Cause I mean, I'll talk oh, bad about it. I don't care. Oh, he, like, I mean, it, you know, no, you know, he, good, he, if you can get good, legit, good, legit heat, like, I think you're good. Like, and that's such a struggle to get nowadays. So, I mean, I'll, I mean, you know, some people can really get it, and, you know, and still maintain the barriers of, you know, you know, suspension of disbelief, and like, and still roll with it. And kudos to you guys. But like, hey, if I can get it, I'll get it. And like, look, this is for the whole sake of entertainment. Okay. Well, that's the like, thing. Like, if you want to like, say about real heat, bro, go chill. down to Tennessee uh, and Arkansas. Oh, I don't. I don't have to go. I, we both know a person that tell us stories about some heat. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Man, let me tell you. And to actually watch it, good grief. I mean, growing where I grew up at, mm-hmm. we didn't really have too much wrestling. Like, on the Missouri side, we would have to go to Tennessee or Arkansas. Right. And from back then to even to the last, what, well, probably the last indie show down in Arkansas I went to was in 2019. And... Mm-hmm. It's still, whew. Uh, the the heat is real, my friend. The heat is real. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, like I said though, uh, I need to. I've only been to Kansas City one time. I need uh, to make yeah, it back out there. I'm supposed to make it out there in March, and uh, I didn't quite make it out there due to this whole pandemic. Like this past March. Yeah, and I'm supposed to go to Virginia. Like in yeah. March too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you did say March is really busy. You did say because really I was going to go yeah. see a uh, Casey stream at uh, uh, what is that place called? Uh, up here, uh, Riot Room. Yeah, was it the Riot Room? Bro, all the in the under the grungy underground shit is in the Riot Room. Like that's just, that is still a legit ninety style <laughs> fucking like bar, and it shit is tiny as hell. So my hey, that damn thing is tiny as hell. You can't get a football team in that motherfucker. <laughs> so uh, a good friend of mine. That, name, I'm not talking shit. I'm just like you know. Oh no, no. Tr- like, I love, trust me. I've I love been it. to <laughs> I've been to some hole in the walls for shows. Uh-huh. That's a good especially hole to go, wall. especially to go see the Acacia Strain. Uh huh. I've almost died at one of their shows in Nashville. This tiny club. Uh-huh. But uh, no, my friend he's a rapper by the name of Jelly Roll. And uh, he did a couple shows out at the Riot Room, and uh, he said it was a really cool place. So I would definitely want to check it out. But uh, like I said, the whole pandemic thing, and yeah, the whole Virginia trip, man, that that's a crazy ordeal. Like we're still waiting for it to be rescheduled because it's supposed to be the fundraiser for the Necro Butcher, right? And they were going to have he was supposed to be there, Sabu was supposed to be there. Hmm. So, uh, uh, uh. but yeah. uh like I said, I definitely need to make it out there. I got a couple other friends that live out there I need to go visit. Uh-huh. So. Now, okay, so uh, what kind of barbecue are you getting when you get out here? Man, you know what? I didn't even eat barbecue the first time I went up there. Oh, the shame. Dude, oh, I know. I know. My buddy yeah. that went with me, he has a food allergy. 
So and we I'm just talk. And I'm always, hang on, and I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, and I'm only squarely talking shit because everybody be hating on Kansas City Barbecue. Now, Kansas City Barbecue is a shit. Like, suck a nut. <laughs> so here's my thing. I had planned on it, but he had a food allergy, so we just ate at uh-huh. the uh, Cracker Barrel next door to the hotel. But uh-huh. uh, when it comes to barbecue, I'm a big dry rub fan. Okay. I'm not a big soft guy. I'm a big dry rub fan. I just like the taste, man. Like, I just spectate and go, but go ahead. So, Kansas City got some good dry rub out there? Uh, dude, I don't know jack shit about that. Is that that stuff JR put on his stuff? Like, I ain't no chef. <laughs> like, I ain't no chef. Well, well, I mean, is there barbecue like, more, well, is it more sauce or is it more dry? Hmm. Hell, I couldn't tell you. I'm not an aficionado. Like I said, I'm only talking shit because, you know, everybody else, you know, like you got Memphis-style barbecue, St. Louis-style barbecue, Carolina-style mm-hmm. barbecue, Texas-style barbecue. Like, Drunk I'm uncle rep- in the backyard bro, barbecue. Bro, I'm repping. I'm, I'm a rep my town's barbecue, bro. Like, our barbecue <laughs> is a shit. Even though I can't name what kind of dry rub y'all motherfuckers use on y'all shit. Can't see the barbecue as a shit. I know what I like in barbecue. I can't speak for you. You said you like dry rub. Me, I go for the sauce. Like, how good is the sauce? Sauce is fucking amazing. It's a little bit of sweet, a little bit tangy. Like, but it got a good ass kick. At least for me. So. See, here's the thing. There are a lot of people that are big barbecue connoisseurs. Uh huh. And I'm, I, I like my barbecue. But right. when I go to towns, uh-huh. There's something else I like to be a better, a bigger, better connoisseur of. What's that? Fried chicken. <laughs> but hey, um, let me let me try to let me try to say this a little bit here real quick. But I'm a fat foodie. Like I'm a fat uh-huh. foodie. So like I like shit. If you got barbecue, like low key, <laughs> if you got barbecue, I'm gonna eat it. Like you don't fucking care. I know what I like. So mm-hmm. like I, I ain't afraid to eat. Like, See, my shit. thing is uh. And I catch I catch a lot of grief for this, but like uh-huh. when I go down to Memphis or St. Louis or something like that, like uh-huh. I don't go to the barbecue places. I go to Gus's. Who? It's Gus's. It started in Tennessee. It's a uh, it's world famous chicken, but like the kick to it is it's spicy. It's real spicy, not that fake Popeye spicy, but real okay. spicy fried chicken. Uh, you know that ghost pepper type shit, ain't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll get to that a little here. Well, no, hell, let's get to it now. Yeah, were you in on that? What's that? When uh, when Brian brought the ghost peppers in, or what was it? The uh, the peanuts. So I don't know who brought the peanuts. Uh huh. But yeah, I, I I ate the peanuts, uh-huh. and I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> oh man, I so wanted to make a rib out of that. Like, oh hey, like here, hey, let's make a like let's. Everybody, let's eat one peanut and go out and have a match. <laughs> but you know, this is oh, usually but, but this is usually where funny. I this is usually where I kind of start like the chronological part of the podcast, uh-huh. where it's like, you know, how'd you get started and all this, and we'll get to that in a second. But you right. mentioned something earlier, and now I can't wait to get to that part of the timeline. So I just want to talk about it right now. Okay, I want to talk about you. Costing me not to be able to use the bathroom in Chaffee at the dollar store. How? Do you remember? Yeah. But how? Uh, you said it was a restaurant? What? You don't remember this at the last Chaffee show? Dude, I thought we were, hell, we, no, we left to go there for something. But, yeah, it was the uh, German days, wasn't it? Yeah. We went there, and uh, uh-huh. the, uh, you walked in first. I... I asked the lady, I was like, can I get, can I use, where's the bathroom? I can't get the key for the bathroom. Uh, and she goes to reach for it. And then I say something to you. She sees that I'm with you. And then she magically decides the bathroom's broke. <laughs> Do you remember this? <laughs> and I remember, and I was so mad. I remember telling we're just leaving. I ended up going Dude, to the gas station. I swear, I did not know that that happened like that. I swear I did not know that happened like that. Wow. Dude, I was looking for sunglasses, man. You know that. We went to like four damn gas stations and had some good sunglasses. Like didn't, you end sunglasses. Up, didn't you end up like finding your sunglasses after you bought them too? Yeah, but I just, no, no, so, okay, so the ones that I had, they were rubbing against my head the wrong way and I didn't like it. Like it was just, it made my uh-huh. head hurt. 
So I was like, you know what, I need something, you know, a little bit looser, like like snug, you know. So that's, and then, why, we were, that's why I was looking for other other sunglasses. And then I remember we left there and went to Rhodes. Uh huh. And I um, went to. Oh, was eyeballing the shit out of me. They were. Them little three old little white ladies. They Man. they were ra- they were ready I mean, to attack. Not, I mean, let's not get racial, but yeah, they were three old white ladies. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. I ain't seen one of them motherfuckers since 1956. What the fuck? <laughs> they were straight meat muggy. They were. But I still bought some sunglasses out of there. And I mean, this isn't like you're standing like right at their table or something like this while they're like, mm-hmm. we're literally talking like we're outside the building getting in the car and they're now mean mugging the car through yeah. their window inside the building. Yes, they were. Uh, that's unfortunate, man. Like it's unfortunately with the way this year has been going, it's 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like we are, as a society, we are well long. That I can say that shit's long behind us. But with everything that has gone on, that shit is long behind us. Like even with this, like as as you know, we're living in these times now. Like. Ain't nobody bitching about race. Like, it, we all trying to live shit. Right, exactly. So, you know. But you like, still got them some small-minded, small-town people. And, and I am so damn sorry for them. Like, please, get the fuck over it. Get the fuck over it. And that's all the way around. Race, color, sexual orientation, all that shit. Like, get the fuck over it. It's 2020. We're like, all... you know, hang on, like, 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 I low key wish they put motherfuckers like that on an island. You ever seen that movie, Nothing But Trouble? No. Oh, bro, with uh, Chevy Chase, Dan Aykroyd, and uh, oh god, oh, uh, who's the damn judge dude in there? Oh, dude, it is a funny movie. It, 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 Demi Moore, oh my goodness. Oh, it's a good. When movie. did this come out? Like the seventies? Uh, no, it was like the early nineties. I've never like heard of it. But when you know about those people, it I'll makes me sound like it's like, like... I probably would have been like four when that came out, <laughs> probably. And I didn't see that movie until like 96, 97. It was good. It was a good movie. They go on this like road trip. They're trying to go to Atlantic City and make the wrong damn turn. And they get in this, they get, uh, they get caught speeding. And, uh, Chevy Chase has got, he's like a stockbroker. And he's got this fly ass black BMW, bro. This motherfucker was sick. I just wish it was like a standard. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only dude, that was the only bad thing about that car is it wasn't a stick shit. So, um, you know, they all they like, hauling ass you know, trying to get to Atlantic City, but then this uh sheriff and this, you know, like pole dunk ass town of like four people <laughs> <laughs> and gremlin. <laughs> And, um, man, I'm like, dude, like, it, it's such a good movie. I don't want to spoil it for you, man. If you haven't seen it, y'all, if y'all ain't seen it, go watch that movie in reference to what we were just talking about, and um, you, you, you'll you see where I'm going with that. If they have, like, that kind of shit for people like that who can't get over the fact that we are so be like, we're all trying to move past that shit, here, you want to be that way, you sit your ass on this fucking island, and y'all stay there. <laughs> That's what they need. Rikers fucking island. Poof. There you go. You live that life. <laughs> Sorry. Get old deliverance. Yeah, yes. Um, what's up, No, nah, what's up? Go ahead. No, I'm trying to think. Uh, no, man, I cannot think. I do not think I've seen this movie. Yeah, it is a, it's a good fucking movie. Is this like one of the iconic movies of the 90s I just don't remember? No, because I think I saw an article on Facebook and people like 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 underrated movies that like that's like really great and they don't get the hype for it. And that was the first one that I saw. I was like, man, like people are you are you are that's a good movie. I mean, I like it. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's got a little cult classic. So, see, I don't know. I'm like one of the words that people like when it comes to. uh some of the older classics and stuff like that, like, I just, I don't find, I, I, I guess the right word is that I didn't find the enjoyment in it. Like, mm-hmm. uh, anybody knows, like, I have one of the most, like, strange, I guess the way you could say it, sense of humor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> strange. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's one way to put it. But, okay. uh, <laughs> everyone told me how funny Blazing Saddles was. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't watch it until I was like 20 something. I, still have I didn't it. laugh one time. I still have it. I I don't recommend it. I I didn't find it enjoyable. I didn't like The Wizard of Oz. We're, whoa, what? You didn't yep. like The Wizard of Oz? You have no soul. Come on. Man. I didn't like Forrest Gump either. Oh my God, dude, you have no soul. Yeah, man, you didn't I watch did. or you didn't like Forrest Gump? I didn't like Forrest Gump. I didn't find it entertaining. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be entertaining, man. That's a that's a tearjerker movie, man. Well, that it did not. Tear jerker movie. Well, that movie jerked no tears for me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was trying to go back and think like there's some of those movies just like like I said, cult classics. Like I just did not did not enjoy like. Right. Well, I don't want to say like that. Uh, okay, like um, I don't want to say that, that movie will be a cult classic as much as it will be a um, uh, um, uh, how do I call it? I also didn't find Christmas like Vacation it, funny. I never seen all of them. They were like a cheesy funny. I, I couldn't get with it. It was just you know mm-hmm. whole, whole funny. You know, I I couldn't get with that. Yeah, but the I mean, car, that car always interested me though. That damn thing, <laughs> that green station wagon, like that damn thing puzzled the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I mean, I don't know why. It just, it was just like I'm not watching a movie to watch, you know, you know these, these clowns. I'm literally like look, trying to like, what kind of station wagon is this? Like, why did they pick these ugly ass green mm-hmm. colors <laughs> on this car? And it was like, wasn't the interior like brown, like doo doo brown, two different shades of doo doo brown? <laughs> also, I another remember, one. But yeah. yeah. Another yeah, one I, I did not enjoy was Star What's Wars. That? Ooh, yeah. I'm sorry, fans. Y'all got heat. Y'all gonna have some heat with Big Lee. Like the fans are coming for you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars, I, yeah. yeah, I did not. I did not find it enjoyable. I didn't find, like. I tried to like everyone talked about when The Walking Dead started, like how great of a show it was. I watched it, thought it was mm-hmm. boring. I can't. I can't, okay, so I don't ever do the. Uh, uh, with the exception, I have one exception, uh, but I don't ever follow when we know where the crowd goes. Uh huh. Except except for in a, you know, um, rope square, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but anyway, no, like I don't ever do that. With the exception of uh, Tiger King. Uh huh. Oh man, have you ever seen that? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's the show, isn't it? So you haven't? Have you seen it? Oh, dude. You, oh, bro. <laughs> yes, I have. So oh, let man. me pick your let me pick your mind about this here. Okay. So I guess the big takeaway from it, or not the big takeaway. Just my big thought from it. Never let a woman 2,000 pounds away piss you off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't understand this thing to where they're like, this movement of like free Joe Exotic, you know, okay. getting from prison and stuff like that. Like To me, that doesn't make much sense because uh, if you look at his track record, I mean, he, I mean, the show even admits like, he did white collar crime as far as like with his taxes and uh donations and taking money from the zoo to fund his election and things of that mm-hmm. nature. And I mean, you have that which people are just kind of like just overlooking because they think that he's some larger than life character, but it uh-huh. seems like people are like are supporting him but are forgetting the fact that this guy did try to trap barely legal dudes with meth to marry him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a motherfucker. He's a damn conundrum. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't so like, it. like it's 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 weird and it's strange. Is I mean that's some weird that's some weird shit. But it's like that'd be some like. If you look at it like that, like they like people are into that kind of shit out there, man. Like people are into that kind of shit. So, what are your thoughts on Joey? I don't Mike? know. Why. Do you think he should be free? Um, 
Because, I mean, the, the end of the story of that was a little bit gripping. I honestly do. Really? I honestly do. I honestly do. Like, because to me, it's, I mean, honestly, I hate to say it, but yeah. Like, he literally let that woman piss him off. They were trading blows back and forth. He literally let her ass piss him off. Like, just throwing blows with each other. Like, bro, you knew you were, your ass wasn't going to win. You should let her ass alone. Right. And now, and now look at where you are. And now look at where you are. But you think he should be free? No, yeah. Did he kill anybody? I mean, he literally at the beginning of the movie, like, brought in, um, you know, just to me, it looked like just, you know, people down on their luck trying to get, you know, trying to restart themselves, right? It gave them a chance where no one else would. That really just grabbed me, you know? I mean, yeah, it was a little bit strange that this dude was like, you know, his methods of getting there was a bit a little over my head. That's for damn sure. I mean, he underpaid his workers and let them mm-hmm. get the first uh, cut of the uh, rotten meat out of the back of the truck, and then took the rotting meat. You said and he turned... underpaid them. Yeah, I thought they knew that, but well, they weren't getting paid enough money. Yeah. Like, I thought they knew that. Like, yeah, like... But did yeah, they... I you mean, know, here's the thing to like, know I mean, uh, and to under fully understand. Mm-hmm. You know, quite possibly, are those people all playing with the quote-unquote full deck? Hmm. And then what about well, the fa- what about the fact with the whole uh, taking the rotten meat and turning around cooking it in pizza and selling it to unknowing customers? Yeah, he's a piece of shit for that. He was a piece of shit for that. And then my question really is, is it's like, <laughs> it's the hip, cool thing now for the Joe Exotic, but even if he had won the the Republican nomination mm-hmm. oh, yeah, really? on, a, on a way crazy scheme out there, would people have actually voted for him? I don't personally think he's probably that much more crazy than the nutcase that won it. But, you know, would people really, really? have voted for him? Really? <laughs> really? What? Dude, they didn't vote for him the first time. Like, even with the standards were there, like, look at everything that he's doing. Like, like this dude, if you literally look into Joe Exotic, this dude has a, you know, little tiger zoo mm-hmm. and stuff, and he's breeding them, which was, like, illegal, right? No, he was legal to do it. There's just uh, some questions about the whole how they use the big cats. How do you use them? Yeah, like how he would let them go in there and how like, he would sell the opportunity for pets and petting them and holding them and taking pictures and things like that. Oh, getting cuddly wuddly with a tiger, bro? The Undertaker just did it. Yeah, well, that's the Undertaker. He has no walls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, like, I'll, I'll, like, honestly, dude, like, every day, like, the coolest one in there was the dude, the, the, the Mexican drug lord, drug lord dude. <laughs> like, he was the coolest one in there. <laughs> like, he was literally the coolest one in there. I like big cats. I wanted more money for big cats. So I started selling drugs for big cats. Pretty much it. That yeah. Was right. And you know, like yeah, it, was it bad? Yeah. I mean, it's like um, this is like I hate to say it, but like the 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 grotesque shit they're doing these days is the the new cool bad. Mhm. And it is what it is, unfortunately. Like, I'm still trying to. Fix- this shit is real. This shit is real. People are literally really doing this shit. I'm just trying to figure out how the one dude got an attractive wife that then agreed for them to have an attractive female nanny. Hey, who do what? The dude that, like, got the zoo from Joe Exotic. Oh, ooh. Oh, that's slimy ass dude. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out, like... How he got with the attractive female and then got the attractive female to agree to have an attractive nanny. 
<laughs> they were swingers, dude. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, that's right. I mean, they're plain and simple. Shit. They're fucking swingers, man. I mean, literally, okay, hey, they literally just put swinging in the spotlight now. Like, oh, mm-hmm. my God, man. He, oh, my God. Like, people are doing this. We are not hip. Yeah, I don't think, we, no matter how. We should, we should spice up our 50, 60, some of our sex life with uh, Natty. Yeah, wink, yeah, wink. I tell you what. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, like, I don't think, like, yes, I, I could oh, ever get into the mindset of something like that. No. I mean, hey, man, we all got our, I mean, them types, I don't know what to call them, but there are some <laughs> other types of like, breed of mind-thinking mind of human beings out there. Yeah. That tickles a fancy with some odd shit. Like, I mean, kudos to you, but, like, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. You're so speaking right. of the odd... Mm-hmm. How did you decide to get into the odd world of professional wrestling? It was a good combination of um, theatrics and uh, strength, like brute strength. Uh-huh. And I say that, and I say that because, like, I was a hyperactive kid. You know, I like karate movies, like that, you know, fighting violence type shit. You know, and um, it was uh, when well, you know, I was a huge uh, Van Damme fan. And um Time Cop was a great movie. <laughs> well, I had just saw him in like Street Fighter, but like like I saw I saw that and I started just following him then and then like right around that time and you know, of course Schwarzenegger and Stallone and all them guys, you know. Um of course, you know, big nineties influence types. And uh-huh. um it was uh I think it was like one Saturday morning. I was just flipping through the TV, and I just saw – oh, and Wells in, in uh, Strongman competition. That shit was huge for me. Like, that shit was huge for me. So I, it was just one day I was just flipping through the channels on Saturday, on Saturday afternoon, and I saw, uh, like, the, the literally the image that I saw in, in, in just a few seconds and got and captured with, like, was Hogan getting jackhammered by Goldberg. Like mm-hmm. – like it just just captivated me, and I was like, I don't know what this is, but I like it already. Like you got, you know, these motherfuckers are literally just fighting. Some dude just had some dude some odd weird shit I ain't never seen before. Like I don't know what it is. I like it. I want to see more of it. You know. Um, I think sometime later, sometime later, um. I was, uh, we, me and a buddy of mine, because I've never been to a live show, a live, like, um, I was in a shell, bro. Like, my, like I said, my 90s was wild, uh, trying to watch wrestling. Um, but, uh, like, a good friend of mine, I was a graduated high school with the guy, and, um, we were, he, I told him, like, you know, I ain't never been to a wrestling show, and the, he said, dude, next time we, they're here, we're going. And he took me to the show, and it was, uh, I forgot the year, but it was like, I think it was like 07, New Year's Resolution 07. And if I recall, it was the same year Triple H blew his other quad <laughs> in that tag match. And uh-huh. we sat there, wa- like, and we sat there and we watched that shit live. And I was like, bro, I really want to do this now. You know? So, yeah. So, and I got so, me you, into it. so you fell in love with WCW and then WWF seeing it live. So, how did you get your uh, feet wet in the wrestling business? You said what? How'd you get your feet wet in the wrestling business? There was a, um, there's a school out here in Kansas City. It's called uh, Extreme Letter Wrestling Center. Um, a, 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 a co-worker of mine at the place where I was working had uh, mentioned something about, hey, there's this wrestling school out in Raytown. You know, everybody knew, everybody knew that I love wrestling at this point in time in my life, you know. Like, uh, I'd be in the shop. And we got those uh, those air hoses that be in the air, and they come down, <laughs> and I'll go up, I'll walk up to it, and do the whole Mr. Kennedy impression. Like, you know, huge wrestling mark, bro. Couldn't get enough of the shit. Like, I love every drop of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, he was uh, he was telling me, hey, there's a wrestling school out in Raytown. And I told him, I told him, I said, dude, I'm telling you like I told everybody else, like there's a, you know, like, I did my research on this. They said usually wrestling schools at this point probably got to last like three years. And this one was just starting up. Mm-hmm. They're in like five, I think they're in like 
like year six now. Congratulations, XWC. <laughs> um, no, I say that in the in wholehearted sincerity. Yes, congratulations. You know, because I was stupid. And um, <laughs> um, oh man, so I said I said to him, I said, dude, I ain't training at no backyard ass promotion. That's what I told him. Like, like if I'm training, I want to train with someone who is a name. So I was like. You know, I've been a, a fucking diva about it. I'm like, yeah, I want to be, <laughs> I want to go to Harley Racing School. And I, I called him one day and he was on the phone. He says, he says, um, hello. I said, uh, yes, yes, sir, Mr. Harley Race. Um, uh, my name is, and I'm not going to say my name. Uh, <laughs> and I'm really wanting to be a, a, a professional wrestler. You know, I was just, you know, just drawn in. You know, I'm on the damn phone with Harley fucking Race. Right. You know? <laughs> And, uh, like, 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 yeah. So he's like, he says, how tall are you? What's your weight? So I'm about five foot seven, 185 pounds. Oh, so you're stocky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. I was like, uh, yes, sir. He says, um, well, uh, because I, I think he was just about to start up in class or something like that. Uh-huh. So, well, uh, you got to fill out an application online. Um, uh, I got to go. I'm about to start practice. And I'm like, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Holly Rice. I am a huge fan. And he just hung up. I'm like, <laughs> bro, I'll, bro, I'll mark the fuck out. <laughs> After that, I'm like, I'll tell my boss, I said, just hold on the phone with Holly Rice, you know? Uh, but yeah, so like the dude was like, and by that time I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go check that school out. So I went, and it was, and it was somewhere around my birthday when I went, and then, um, I, I walked up in there, and I saw, I just saw the ring, and I was just like, yo, like, there's a <laughs> fucking ring right here. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I'm like, fuck this, like, I'm signing up. <laughs> you know? And I did, and they and they trained me, and I've had a, a, a massive collection of great trainers. Um, from so you started there. at Harley School? No, no, I started in XWC. I started because it's a school out here in Raytown, Missouri, close to Kansas City, uh-huh. where I started. Is where I started training. Okay, so I, didn't, I did I did not start with, I did not start training with Harley Race. I never trained with Harley Race. Okay, so. You, Okay, so you just, after the phone call, then you went back to XWC and trained. It wasn't, that wasn't like a whole, all that, that whole time, I think there was about a good, like, maybe year, year and a half that went okay. by in, in between these incidents. Okay. So, so yeah, no, I, so it wasn't like, like, by when I, at the time that I called Harley, XWC was nowhere near in existence. Okay. Oh, but that fucking underground was. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. Harley School or uh, XWC was not even around when I first called Harley. Okay. And then you know, like I said, a year and a half or so goes by, and I'm like, you know what, man, I ain't getting no damn older. <laughs> and um, you know, I ain't getting no damn younger. My bad. I ain't getting no younger, so I'm only getting older. So I go check out the school. So I went and I checked out the school and I saw that ring and I just fell in love. And I asked one of the trainers, I said, I, I begged them if I can just suplex somebody. And they're like, no, you got to, you know, do your training and stuff. Or, you know, like, fill out the application, do the training, do the tryout, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm like, fuck, like, you ain't got to convince me. Shit. All right. I'll see if I can get a freebie. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I signed up, uh, what, a couple weeks later and um, started training. Nice. So what year was this? 15. So 2015. So yeah. then, did you ever do any of Harley's uh, wrestling camps? No. What's your dad? I was I just wondering. I, uh, I didn't do one. No, no surprise, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> no, they, uh, had one, uh, going around the close time. Uh, we actually went into Harley's, uh, training place because, uh, I think it was their first like big show, the, their first big uh, night of champions, super champion show, whatever it's called. Anyways, and they brought Flair in. 
And, of course, to make sure nobody got anything for free out of Flair or anything like that, they did the meet and greet with Flair, like, off off from where they had – because they had the show at the high school, and they had uh, his meet and greet at the training center. So we actually got to go in there into Harley's training and uh, see the setup. Was this the one in I think so. Okay. Like, all the little – I know that the the show is in Troy – yeah, now, yeah, they, they moved to Troy, I think a few years ago or something like that. Yeah, because I think this had to be, this had to be probably 2015. So, where everybody knows you from, <laughs> uh, listening to this podcast most likely, is uh your endeavor within Cape Championship Wrestling. So, how did, how did you get started at Cape Championship Wrestling? How did you get, how did, did you reach out to Jason? Did Jason reach out to you? No. And I will forever thank the McMahon, not the one that everybody's thinking of, but I will forever thank the McMahon family. Uh, <laughs> I, like, thank you guys, like, for sure. Because uh, if it weren't for them, I would have never have met any of you case motherfuckers, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> I say that, I say that in all love. Um, um, so, like, when I was still training at XWC, I was, you know, I've already done graduated the program, and I'm out doing shows, but I can still come in and train. You know, mm-hmm. and I did that regularly for a little bit. Um, uh, one of the members from the McMahon family had said to one of the tra- one of our, tra- our head trainers, and the head trainer goes to our chat room and says, hey, there's an opportunity at a show, but it's down in Cape Girardeau. Is anyone interested? DM me. So I'm, it's a Saturday afternoon, you know, it's, you know, it's a good payday at this point in time. And I'm like, damn, like, all my bills are paid this month. Like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? And I got some, a good chunk of change left over. I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and make that trip. <laughs> so I told him, I said, yeah, you know, I'm available to make the trip. And then I mm-hmm. made the trip, and then it was the first super show. Not the, super, not the first super show. It was the first Cape show. Mm-hmm. So I think so. the way it went was, you know, the head trainer message. I messaged him. He messaged one of the members of the McMahon family, and that person, I believe, messaged Jason. Okay. Hey, I got. I know a guy. He's on coming down from Kansas City. Bobby Bobby. And then and, history starts and then, there. And then and then history starts there. Hey, anyone that's listened to this mm-hmm. podcast previously, we've talked about. You know, in wrestling, uh, it's all about uh, earning, earning your stripes. You know being dedicated to the cause. And I would say you've probably been one of the most dedicated people to Cape Championship Wrestling from the beginning up until, you know, up to the last show. Mm -hmm. Like, you've been, you know, you've been a workhorse for Cape Championship Wrestling. And, you know, we can't say enough good things about you. We may be some of the only people that say good things about you. I gotta do my job a little harder. I gotta do my job a little harder. (laughs) You know, piss you guys off more. <laughs> well, ahead. well, sir, you know Thank me you. outside. Thank you know you. me outside of this crazy business, so you know that takes uh-huh. a little bit to uh, upset or disturb me. So, right. You're but uh, for wrestling. That's right. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's look at some of the. Let's look at some of your history here at uh, CCW. Uh, mm-hmm. It wasn't that long after uh, you worked your way up to the ranks, and uh, you uh, you got some gold, did you not? Oh yeah. Yeah, the first like, piece of gold was uh, the big one. The big one. The big one, yeah. Cape Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. So go, let, let, go over that match with us. Tell us how, how it came about with you uh, getting the belt. Oh, oh man, right into it, man. Like, right into it. Got to tell the bad stuff mm-hmm. already. Already. No, man, we're going to tell this story right a little bit. So, you know, I didn't work my way up through the Cape Championship Wrestling roster. It was an impressive roster with guys like Jake Durton, Davey Vega, Tony Cozina, Brandon Barwire, Austin Lane. Like, the, the, the roster is stacked, bro. Like, it's stacked. You know, the best like, roster on the indie scene, like, right? Past and like past and present, and it's just like yeah, it was yeah, it was a fucking roster, and I worked my way up through that, got myself into a main event spot at the biggest show of K Championship Wrestling, you know, wrestling year, mm-hmm. and and yeah, huh? kind of stole the show, you know, yeah, main event, yeah. main event, working Boom Boom Cole Cabana, you know. Missouri's most malicious, uh, Brandon Barbwire. 
And from Road to Road, Pillar and Post, Austin Lane. And then this guy, Hollis Jarrell. <laughs> superstar. Man. Man. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So, uh, now to the end of the match that you, you know, alluded to earlier. Um, me and Jeff O'Dell cut a deal. Barbed wire's out. Jarrell in. And then bash him over the head with a belt. Win the match. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a fatal four-way. Every man for himself. And that's what it was. Every man for himself. I, I, mean, remember. I mean, I mean, I mean, if I do so recall, like Brandon's bar fires, his biggest weakness is that he likes to talk. Yeah. And I'll leave it. And I'll <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I remember being so happy for you winning the belt, uh-huh. but I also remember being so mad because I don't want to put anybody on blast because I know how certain people are. But I won't say that there was a certain person in that match who uh, gave away what was about to happen to the crowd right before it happened. Oh, oh goodness. Who was this? It, it was, I will say this. It was somebody that's not a – hasn't been back to Cape Championship Wrestling since that match, but told some of the people in the front row they're not, he's not getting back in because he's about to hit him and get the belt. Oh. Hmm. And that person already but, put, okay. put me in a bad mood that whole weekend, so. Uh, so, then I would ask, then one would have to ask, um, th- like, like, as a, as a, as a working professional, hey, you know, this motherfucker just, you know, like, cause you know, you got people who can guess the thing, like, we all do it. Like, we right. all, like, every good wrestling fan will sit here and call a match, like, we all do it. Like if you like you're sitting there, you're watching WWE, and you're like you're you're you're, you're you know captivated by everything that's going on, and oh my god, you know one, two, and the motherfucker kicks out, and you sit right here and you know that this dude is gonna kick out. Mm-hmm. Like we all do it, like we all do it. So like it could have been like he's one of those super marks like that. I want like with all due respect, like he's probably one of those super super marks that just knows it and it's just calling this. Like as you see it, like I don't know who I don't know who the dude is personally, mm-hmm. um, so I'm giving him the full benefit of the doubt that he was just saying that shit. <laughs> like guess what he's saying it. But uh, when overall, like, I, don't, I don't know. So overall, it was a it was a solid weekend. We uh, I guess spent a little bit of time with you. Mind, like I'll say this, I would not have mind if someone had like, hey, Austin for the finish, you know, mm-hmm. like just switch it on the fly like that. Like, I know, I understand. The finish got blown. Had to go to a new one. Mm-hmm. Hey, next time, kid. You know, <laughs> I would, I would have been, I would have been totally fine with that. Like, just let me, I'll let, just let me wrestle off the lane a few more times, you know? Right. But overall, we had a good weekend that weekend. Uh, oh, yeah. We can't, we can't, <laughs> well, well, I, you had probably more than I did because oh, for I sure. had, because I ended up having to leave and go uh-huh. on like 24 hours of no sleep. To deal yeah. with some of that top tier talent that came into that show, but oh, uh, man, damn, you damn right. <laughs> I remember uh, you. Uh, I well, I can't tell the whole story about oh. this, but uh, are some of the remarks that came. But I do remember uh, you catching you catching eyes for some a certain person there that night, that Friday night. I don't know if you remember this or not. No, I very much do remember this. I didn't catch the dude. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in a, in a manner of speaking, if we're going to sugarcoat it, like yes, I call eyes as I'm right here batting my eyes out into this, you know, <laughs> cul-de-sac here uh-huh. <laughs> in, in Jackson County, Missouri. <laughs> and uh, no, I didn't catch. I was trying to. I was trying to fuck, man. <laughs> like. And, and and the sad part about it is, it's like you know she made some remarks, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, you gotta, you you're you're inviting me over to your house party. I said, okay, oh, I stay <laughs> over here in these, I stay over here in these trailers. Okay, bet. Like you know what? But I do have to go. Like I'm thinking, I have a casual conversation with a person, you know? Because uh-huh. we were kind of talking a little bit. They like, were kind of talking a little bit, but like not like that, you know? Just you know, engaging in conversation. And but she invited me to the damn party and insisted that, insisted that I come. So I'm like, okay, bet, you know. 
Like what dude ain't gonna pass? What dude ain't gonna pass up if a stripper is inviting you to your house? Oh yeah, we're talking I mean, about something completely there, different. Oh really? Yeah. No, oh no, I didn't catch eyes from nothing like that. But that would have been the only one. Nah, they were talking about. If, if you talk, if you talk about the main event porn star, then yes, like that was some amazing. That was an amazing feat. I, I'll never go to a, a strip club. after that. After that, after that show, I have not ever been to a strip club and been like, I came in here to look at titties. No, I go in there looking for a damn show. <laughs> like it, like bro. Um, uh, I'm not going to give out any names, but. Like, we went to a club with a top-tier talent, like, and that could be anybody. Uh, yeah, it could be anybody, right? <laughs> it could be anybody, any top-tier talent. Shout out to the pony. And, sh- and that's uh, <laughs> like, no, it could it could be the pony. It could be somewhere else. You never know. Like We only have, we only, we only like, have, anyway. we only ahead. have one strip uh, club here, and the okay. guy that was running at the time, good friend of mine, Mikey Mike right. out there, Mikey Cox. He uh, yes, sir. he was running. He was doing good business out there. Shout out to Mikey. He's a big podcast fan. I hope <laughs> to have him on soon. I hope to actually. Uh, I think if I understand right, he's uh dabbling in a uh, in a strip club over in uh, Louisville. And once okay. this pandemic's over, I think I'm gonna have to go uh, visit him. And his uh, he's, he's, new work is uh-huh. do what? No, oh, no, go ahead. Oh. He's going to uh, oh, yeah the club in Louisville. Go ahead. Yeah. We have to uh, take a trip down there to go visit him. Oh, for sure. There's got to be a show there, though. They gotta oh, yeah. The show. Okay. Well, well I mean, they're, they're, you know, Kentucky. Not that, you, like, I'm not trying to, like, come off as no damn, like, perv or no, you know, no smut guy or anything like that. But, yeah, man, that's what dudes do, you know. We go to strip clubs, yeah. You know, I'm gonna but, uh, ladies go to, you know, Chippendales. Like, it ain't no big thing. You know, it's 2020. That's right. But, anyways... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mikey. We hope to see you soon. Um, you know, Hollis may have to come meet me halfway here, and uh, we go ride down together. Uh huh. May get you booked on one of them. No, nah, uh, hell no, no, nah, no, we ain't. Unfortunately, bro. Like I learned my lesson last time. Like I was like the story I was telling in the beginning. Long story short, I'll circle back. Like if we going to a strip club. I am definitely driving by myself because that's what fucked me over last time. <laughs> I. Not, well, not having my personal car ride with somebody. Like, I, I, I think I'm not trying to get nowhere. <laughs> well, that that's the difference when you go with certain people versus if you go with Big Lee. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you'll be there. You'll be there. Yes. Yeah. That would be the plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. I'll hold you to it. Although I can be easily distracted to go somewhere else for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Right. So back right. back to the topic here. So uh, yeah. you get hey, the belt. Wrestling. Uh-huh. Right. You get the belt. You uh. So now this is really starting to I be, pull in. I be. Go ahead. Boom boom Colt Cabana, the best of the best off the lane, and Missouri's most Missouri's most malicious Brandon Barwire in the same night at the same time. <laughs> Please go ahead. So now this starts rolling into the pinnacle. Yes, sir. Tell me about your time in the pinnacle. But mm-hmm. first, how Big Lee got robbed and how he should have been on that pinnacle T-shirt. Uh, I don't know anything about you getting robbed. <laughs> I, I was robbed of the opportunity. I should have been on that T-shirt. It would have sold yeah. better if I was on the T-shirt. Yeah, probably. <laughs> You probably you show right. You show right. I'll give you that. In, in, in uh business terms, yeah, you, you show right. Um, but how the pinnacle? What the t-shirts got started? No, no, I know how the t-shirts no, no, got started. Go ahead, I mean, bad. tell me about um, your time in the pinnacle. My time in the pinnacle was awesome, dude. I got to work with a lot of just uh, amazing talent, like in tag teams and just in you know single match. Like my time in the pinnacle was, it, it was truly just amazing, just to sit back and watch people work and watch people do their stuff and watch how a particular style of wrestling is, you know, worked. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, and, and, and just how it works. Uh, Jason's a story guy. I mean, I get, I get like, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's, dude, there's plenty of wrestling for everyone out there. Like, sit back, find what you like, 
and appreciate the shit. Like, you got the old timers coming there. And this may piss a lot of people off, but look, it's a good time to be a fucking wrestling fan. You got Goldberg and Brock <laughs> fucking Lesnar still fucking wrestling. Shawn Michaels is, is eh. You know, so we all dying to see that shit again. You know, Triple H is coming, you know, like, you got those motherfuckers who still around. We don't know what the fuck the Rock is going to do. You got these young cats, you know, these damn gymnastics slipping all over the damn spot. You got the motherfuckers in the middle trying to, like, tell, get the drama of pro wrestling. You know, they trying so hard, too. But none of them motherfuckers are conventional, you know. And then the same shit with AEW. You know, they a bit more racier. Like you or not ra I don't wanna say racier. They a little bit they they ain't fucking P G, that's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, I haven't gotten the chance to sit and watch it, but I also like being so like just uh, you know, behind the curve a little bit. So I can sit and enjoy it for myself. So I don't wanna sit and watch AEW right now. And, like while mm-hmm. everybody else is enjoying it. Like I watch certain stuff, you know. But I won't sit and watch, you know, watch like whole episodes and shit like that. Like it's, it just helps me appreciate wrestling how I do. You know, mm-hmm. so much wrestling. It's so much wrestling out there. I don't know. Like, I'm still I want. I want to. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm still old to deathmatch wrestling. So. Yeah. <laughs> I like the drama, bro. I like the drama. But yeah, so I learned a lot. I I, I learned so much in the Pinnacle, and it was really fun. It was really fun. Grilling shit, but fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean. I mean, shit, bust your ass and five, and, and, you know, you wrestle five times in one night, damn. <laughs> <laughs> They're the man, workhorse. Man. I mean, that's cool. So. I ain't trying to brush it off all, I ain't trying to brush it off all nonchalantly, but yeah. Like, <laughs> it was, it, it was grueling ass work. You know? But hey, you know. And to me, me, honestly, me that stronger. was probably. To me personally, that was probably the best, uh, one of the high points of CCW was the pinnacle. You think so? I think so. Oh. You don't? I say in current times, my friend, I say in current times. So leave it at that. Well, current time, there's nothing, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Again, I say in current times, my friend. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, I hope they can hear this, but. I say in current times, my friend. Don't know if anybody <laughs> heard that or not. What but, was yeah. it? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's one of them behind the curtains. Behind the curtains, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, anyways. But, yeah, I enjoy. I enjoyed my time with the Pinnacle. Next question, please. <laughs> so, the Pinnacle, you know, mm-hmm. as all good things do, it comes to an end. And then yes, we sir. see, we now Trump see, ha- yep, Trump yep. Trump. Go ahead. yep. Then, uh, we now see it, uh, Hollis moves into a new formation, a new group of House 100. Tell us about it. House Tell us about House 100. House 100, uh, is a, is a dark place. It's like, if you had to, if you had to, um, if all human beings, how I would describe it, and my perception of it, because, you know, pro wrestling, you have your own perception of what shit is. Um, <laughs> my perception of House 100 is that there are a lot of people out there with, um, you know, that darker version of themselves. And that would have been House 100. Like, just just psychologically just dark. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we... But we kind of came to a little dark place, and it did not get the momentum it should have. Why do you think that is? It it it, it was it was just dark, and everybody just again, you know, different strokes for different folks. And I don't think Cape was a place for House One Hundred. Doomed to fail. Doomed to fail in Cape. What do you think would have made it better, or what do you think make it work better? I think. Uh, what are you watching? Work a bit of, um, I'm, dude, I'm outside, man. I told you, dude, I'm enjoying this damn weather. <laughs> I didn't know what you, like, it just uh, sounds no, like some no, kind of, like, grinding. Like buzzing. Yeah, there's a guy across the street. He's working on a window in his house. Oh. Yeah. So, wow. anyway. So, so, hang on. You can hear the guy across the street's buzzing sounds, but you could not hear something that I had up close. Oh, uh uh-uh. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Go back and listen to this. It was so short and so quick, you probably missed it. Listen <laughs> That's to what hard. she said. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so what would have made, what do you think would have made Wait, House What would have made House 100 better? Yes. Well, nothing. House 100 was its own entity. House 100, there was nothing you could have done to make House 100 better. It was, it was good as it is. There was nothing. Like, you know what? Like, if I had to look at it on an aspect, maybe if the fan base had, you know, tapped into that dark side a little bit. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? But, see, I, but again, but Cape is his own fan base. Like, there's, mm-hmm. there's some people that's into that. Because we had a few fans, and they were into it. And that's just my perception of it. Like, it could be something different for someone else. You know, but see, I was gonna say for, for me, me that, like, was dark, that was a dark, that was a little bit of a dark time. You know? Like if you have to drop into your, you know, psychological, you know, psyche, like you know, um, what's that movie, American Psycho? Uh huh. Like something like that type of feel. Like that's just that, that's how I felt the House One Hundred should have been. But see, it could have been something different. See but for me, way, like, I, I just either way, either way, I enjoyed my time there. And, and just as that. Go ahead. See, for me, like, I felt like the problem was House 100 was built one way, mm-hmm. and they didn't really have anything to go against it. Like, there needed to be some kind of, like, competing. Opposition. Yeah. yeah. Competing forces. Yeah, we did have competing forces. The rest of CC out of you. No, I rest, like. You had, you had Billy Hill, now retired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you had Jackson Crowley, okay, and he's and he was the single driving force, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Ooh. But what else? Did, but what else did you have? Like you did not have like some kind of unit or something else behind that. Like if you take like different parts of the of the House One Hundred. And, like, mm-hmm. you try to, like, put spot to spot to, like, have programs working with each one. It's like, you didn't really have that because, like, it wasn't, like, an opposition-wise. It's like, so, like, I, you know, you had Hustlers against the Wise Church. So okay. you look at something like that. Like, I love the Wise Church. But there was not a real, like... You had the two teams, but it really wasn't like a House 100 ant versus like an anti-House 100. Right. You're looking for faction versus faction. I figured that's where you were going. Guerrilla warfare, right. in essence, of everything. Yeah. hmm Like, uh, you're looking for faction versus faction. Yeah. Well, hey. Like, man. look, look I mean, at, uh, like, go back to the 90s. But, the, like, but in, 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 in the, in the, what, like, five, six years that Kate's been around, there has only been Two factions. Look, it's not my fault that the baby faces got too big a damn ego that they want to hop all over the damn place and, you know, team together. Hey, guy, you're a good guy. I'm a good guy. Let's be a team and beat up on fucking House 100 or the Pinnacle. You know? Like, it's not my fault they couldn't do it. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's, I'm saying, and, like, and if you look. And in look, either group that I was blessed to be in, we ran rough shot, okay? Well, it's like, if you look, like, in the 90s, when I talk mm-hmm. about, like, guerrilla warfare, like, you look, you had the NWO. You had a right. long-standing NWO feud with, like, the Four Horsemen. You look at right. WWF, you had DX versus the Nation of Domination. Nation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, you had these types of feuds. You know, you right. had Austin and the Ministry. Like, and you'd have different people, like, they would try to put with Austin. But it didn't have mm-hmm. that full feud feel like NWO, Horsemen, DS, a group of nation. friends, that, yeah. you know, that gang, that gang warfare, the warriors type shit is what you're looking for. So, like, and I go back and, to it. And, and I get it, and I get it. I, I, I totally get it. But, like, it's not my fault that the good guys could not join together. Like, I've seen the good guys in the back of the locker room. All oh, you motherfuckers like anime. Yeah. Hey, anime fan club, what's up? Let's beat down damn Pinnacle, form damn Palazor, get kick our ass out of fucking CCW. But nobody has done that shit. So well, guess what? Faction number three, where are you at? Because that's where <laughs> I am. We're going to call it Big Lee's World, but we're going to bring in some <laughs> different people. 
And I you hope this is ex- I hope this is explicit because that's just I mean it is what it is. If I'm gonna you know polish the room, I'm gonna kayfabe it, or I can switch it up. Like it's, it is what it is. You know. Go ahead. Hey, this is the Heat Seeker. This is the Heat Getting <laughs> Podcast, Big Lee's World Podcast, <laughs> BigLee'sWorld dot com. It's awesome. Oh, this is so. But funny. um. Uh-huh. But yeah, I just like look at some of the stuff, like matches to see, like I like to pick on the hustlers. Right. Cause... And we have and we have a, such a phenomenal CCW has such a phenomenal roster, like top to bottom. Like you, it, 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 it you can't beat it. Go well, ahead. see, that's the thing, though. And, and, it's it's like... high, and it's a and it's a and it's a less hodgepodge of everything, and it works, and I love it. Well, see, that's the thing, and like looking at it, it's like. I don't, I think that there's, there's still work to be done with House 100. I think there's mm-hmm. some things that could be built, mod, and I know some of the things that needs to be done, probably in other mm-hmm. people's eyes, is it the while most. While everybody's out here, while everybody is out here watching and loving and Free Joe Exotic is in the right. picture, you need to look into House 100 a little bit more. If you're out liking Bray Wyatt and The Fiend and what he's doing, then you need to look into House 100 a little bit more. Go ahead. So, right now, House 100 with this Hill faction, as a Hill faction here, mm-hmm. if this is going to compete, and if there's going to be, like, a babyface faction, someone's to compete against this dark, demonic House 100. No, that's I think my it, perception of it. That's my perception That could be... When, that, when that's, I was this is where in, I'm going to... When I was brought in, when I was brought in the House 100, it was the, with the intention of setting me free, and this is this is me in my freeness. You <laughs> see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we've tried to get people to come, but no. But see, this in, is so, this, yeah, this is my opportunity mm-hmm. to put out to the bookers <laughs> to be right. like, hey, this is what's gonna. Is this is what's going to bring the door up. This is what brings the gate up. And this is going to be one of them. Cl- we can make a classic indie feud out of this because mm-hmm. where it is set up at, the main event for the Super Show was to be Otis and Cash. Uh, should have been me. Well, I mean, you know how things go. Rook. No, but yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Yep. here's the thing, though. Going into this, this could have been a great faction versus faction, and okay. I push, I push two guys out to Booker, to the booking agent, to the Booker man, mm-hmm. to bring the in, man, yep. mm-hmm. and kind of start building a faction, because what well, Cash is the head of it. There needs to be like-minded guys with Cash. Similar style, similar uh, reputation, and kind of build from there. Ass warfare is what you're looking for. I want to bring in John Wayne you Murdoch and Reed Bentley, the Tri Show mm-hmm. Rejects. I, I don't even know who they are, and I am so sorry. They're out of Kentucky. They, okay. they they're known for their hardcore style, right? But I think that you could put those two guys. They're both known as single wrestlers. They're both known mm-hmm. as the tag team. That could be a good building block trifecta. Right. To start working to build up that face warfare or that face, mm-hmm. uh, face stable to start guerrilla warfare with House 100. And I think what that does is it brings an extra edge because what ends up happening is, is when you have your heel stable mm-hmm. and it's got this, I agree with the dark side of it. Of the House 100, I agree 110. percent But what mm-hmm. happens is when you have this more pseudo edgy style of group, mm-hmm. and you don't have that pseudo style edge to go against it, it kind of okay. makes it off kilter, unbalanced. And I think when people see that, they're just like, "Oh, well, this would be cool. It'd be cooler if they had something to go against." And I think that's kind of where you get into, you know, yeah, yeah, bringing right. in, balancing out that, balancing out, like, you know, I, I've said this from day one, one of the biggest gets I've wanted to get through CCW for a long time was cash. Mm-hmm. I see, I 110% support cash and see that, you know, yeah. I don't know if you've seen some of his stuff outside of CCW, but he does great work. 
He's great on the mic. Some of it does have to be altered for CCW, but mm-hmm. that that's a that's a polarizing character there. And if we can get more built around him, then I think that's gonna get get the people excited and get them invested and want to follow it more. And the other thing that I think also, and I don't know how you feel about this, but one thing that I see the roster lacking in whole is I don't feel like proper social media is used to promote what they do. Like you look at bigger indie guys, they're constantly cutting video promos, putting it out on social media, putting it out there, putting it out there. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of the guys on the roster that don't do this. Right. And I think that if we can see more of that, more branding, more advertising, more of that one-on-one, those video attacks. I mean, I'll say this. I'll say this. And I'm not, and I, I am totally not using this shit as any kind of cop out. But, um, you know what the difference is between, you know, those top level indie guys and, uh, the guys, you know, like, you know, K Country wrestling guys? We all have real jobs. <laughs> we are fucking essential. Well, right here's now. the well, here's the thing. Like, it's no, I mean, it's, it's no I mean, different it's, than it's the people. Hard, it's hard work. It's hard work to get there, right? Like, I guess that. Like, I, I totally get it. But like, dude, like, like you, like my work schedule. You, you, you know how fucking hard it is to find a motherfucker with a damn camera at one o'clock in the damn morning. <laughs> Okay, most motherfuckers like that are in the bed sleep or fucking, okay? <laughs> like, they are not trying to, like, take no damn photos of me or anybody else at 2.30 in the morning, okay? And not only that, what the hell can you do outside of having a, a, a shop, like a, a, a one of those photo things, like, for real, really? Like, but that's just, but that's my, but personally, that's my schedule, but, mm-hmm. like, it could be different for someone else. Again, well, like, I mean, if you've got time to, if you've got time to sit around, uh-huh. if you've got time to sit around and play video games and mm-hmm. do stupid stuff on the internet for four or six hours a night, you've got right. time to put your chair behind a wall yeah. or in front of a wall and just uh-huh. talk for right. 35, 45, 60 seconds, cut a promo, you know, uh-huh. th- those little things. There are it's going to help like grow that, the brand. There are places it's going to look a little harder. But, yeah, I, I totally see. I totally see what you're saying with that, and you are absolutely right. We're not outputting enough content. Characters aren't outputting enough content. And then I think, content. And then I think the other – there's another thing that goes into it mm-hmm. is I think mm-hmm. – you do you do really good at this, which we'll mm-hmm. get into later. But okay. I think with social media, a lot of people – can't draw the line and keep business social media and personal social media separate. Yeah, you're right. But again, like, but and I'm not knocking. This is not knocking anyone. But like, a lot of people, bro. They, they, people like all of us. Every single damn one of us, we put our all into it. So I totally mm-hmm. see why when people are out here and they're you know flying around by their real name. I totally get it, and it's so close, and it's so personal. Like it is, I get it. But a lot of like this is uh, again, it's it's both sports and entertainment. It's sports entertainment, like and, or and, and like that's pro wrestling, bro. It's sports entertainment. Let's be real. Like it's one of the damn things. Um, you kind of have to, like there, it, it's a character. You keep, like yeah, you give your all to it, but you there's a point in time where you have to detach yourself to maintain sanity from your character. Mm-hmm. Like look at like look at uh. Like Heath Ledger, who did that shit. I mean, best damn Joker. And look at like the dude is dead now. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'd say because of that shit. You know, he couldn't let go. Uh, what's his nuts from uh, Killmonger from Black Panther? I heard he did the same shit. You know, couldn't detach himself from it. Took him a minute to get out of that and be him. You know, Michael B. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, who else? Like, there's a lot of people like, like, oh, Christian Bale, and he's really damn good at it. He's really damn good at it. Immersing himself in a character and just snapping back and being him. Like, he's really good at it. Hugh Jackman's good at it. Like, 
you got to be able to, like, take your character and, you know, portray your character, but then, you know, draw it back some. You know, don't get to what happened. Like, it's all, like, bro, for real, all of us is out there in man thongs and panties and tight <laughs> stuff, flying around in front of a whole bunch of people, you know? Like, like it don't get as insecure as that shit. Like, I, I mean, but it's like a, it's like, honestly, like, it should be like a total boost of confidence. Like, mm-hmm. good or bad. Like, you, if you bomb out there, like, bro, you just, you, I mean, dude, you were just out there with your nuts showing. Like, get real. <laughs> like, playing a character. Playing a character. I can't tell you how many times, like, I showed, like, I literally showed my bare ass to the crowd. Like, as a spot in the match. Like, I don't take, like, that as, like, I take it serious, mm-hmm. but I want to have a good time too. Like, as a, as a wrestling character, like everybody else do, you know? Like, everybody else out there, they're having a good time, and they all take it so serious. We all take it serious. But some of us, we don't take it as serious as, you know, like... But I, see, like, that's I'm the thing, so, though. I'm so, I'm so caught up. Like, if House of Rome don't work out, I can find something else, you know? Right. Well, I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, you do, like I said, you do pretty good at the whole, like, you know, you have the... Holostro and you like you keep things with it mm-hmm. but you have another aspect like a side of it like even with right. the social media you have this versus you know separate I was going to say what your right. real name was but I was like I ah, know he said right. no earlier no yeah yeah <laughs> so I like I mean you keep you have a separation there yeah. and I think that's the problem with some guys is they don't you know there, yeah. there's a thing of like Having a personal social media. Again, I don't blame. You, I don't blame anyone for it. I don't blame anyone for it. Like you, you, you like you, you do you. Like if you are so, <laughs> you got your whole heart set on, like taking it that serious. Hey, I, I am not one to, to say anything about it. I think you should take a chill pill and, and you know, just enjoy it and what it is and look out. Like and you, like, let's say like this, man. I'm Hollis Dero, and I'm so and so and so and so, right? <laughs> Someone, so and so and so is going to sit out here and how can I make Hollis Jerome better? Mm-hmm. Okay. What do fans like? What do they don't like? Or even better, what's being done too much of? And go from there. Like, look at that's the details. Look at back and sitting back and seeing what's being done. Dude, you've seen a Cape Championship wrestling show before. I mean, hell, you were part of them for a good long while, right? Mm hmm. Top to bottom of the car, how many matches did you have where uh, somebody was always flying around? Always there's, flying around. There's quite a bit. Quite and for a somebody deal. and for somebody like me, like I'm not a big fan of that style. Like I'm I not saying I'm not a big I'm not a fan I'm, I'm not a big fan of that style, but I'm just saying that there mm-hmm. is variety. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like I wanna be able to provide variety as a wrestler. Like, you know, I don't do, like, dude, like, there was a point in time where I went to Oklahoma and I dressed up as a luchador once. That shit was fun as hell. Like, <laughs> I know jack shit, I know jack shit about wrestling Mexican style, but nobody knew who Hollis Jero was at that point in time. Like, I wrestled down there before, but, like, I don't do it regularly. But I got to do a whole bunch of shit that I ain't never done before. Like, as a, as a, sig- as a signature Hollis Jero stuff. Just, just, you know, just trying it out, you know? Mm-hmm. And it worked, and it got over his shit. So when are we going to see love. death? So when are we going to see deathmatch, Hollis? <laughs> when it comes, it just has to come. I don't, I don't, I don't just, you know. But personally, I'm not a fan of that style. But would I like to get into a little bit of hardcore shit? Yeah, I don't mind it. After all, I did go through one of the big nasty tables, and it did slice my side up pretty good. How did you get convinced to do that? I wasn't convinced to. It happened. Really. <laughs> It just happened, okay? <laughs> I was in a damn match with Austin Lane. The motherfucker hit me with a damn belt to win my belt. And I fell, and I went through the damn table. That's how it happened. Actually, I think that was the I was show gonna, I'm... I was going to give him. I was going to give him the damn brain buster, and we just you know, we got up there at the same damn time. And, like, oh, look, here's the belt, bro. Like, no, this is my belt. No, you motherfuckers had it too long. Tug of war. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> no, we both got the damn belt. Huh, huh, huh. Clink, bam, boom. I'm through a table. Slack my ribs up. Slack my elbow up. It was a good fucking night. <laughs> Actually, I think that was the show I missed. <laughs> 
to be fair, I had tickets yeah. to a sold, to a sold out corn show in a very tiny venue. Uh huh. <laughs> so, and don't worry, I caught. I also caught heat from other members of management for skipping that show to go see corn. But yeah. you know what? I don't regret it. No, okay. <laughs> I that's mean, your thing, man. That's your thing, dude. So, what does the future entail for Hollis Drew? Uh, right now, for the next few weeks, it's damn quarantine, unfortunately. Apologize for all the remarks you made here. About. <laughs> so, I mean, once what? we get once the rat once the rats one business once, rat, once we saw once, once we kick up again, dude. Um, I'm going to go out. The, the, I think the first few shows, not the first few, but like, you know, like two shows for me, but like the first show at each of the promotions that, you know, I'm consistently working for, mm-hmm. I'm, it's just going to be a, a thank you match. Cause to me, that's why I like, I won't go like, cause I know there's been, you know, cause WWE did it and I've heard online that there's quite a few promotions that's trying to do the dark arena matches type stuff. Give me, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? And, um, like, kudos to you guys. Like, but I can't do it because this is, like, I have to wrestle for the fans. Mm-hmm. Like, I work I work a style where I like to feel the fans, you know, a little bit old school. But I like to see where they are and then go from there. You know, if we fuck up and just go out and work and kill it, like, I like that style better. Like, just thank them for being there. Like, that match is a thank you from me to you. Thank you for fucking being there. Thank you for blowing the piss out of me. Like, thank you for cheering me. Like, thank you for calling me on some stupid shit. You know. <laughs> you know? So, like when I like when I when I throw my damn cigar at someone intended for you know this lady's forehead and ends up getting in some child's nachos. Like, yeah, because <laughs> that happens pretty frequent. You know, like thank you for being invested in me. That that like those next shows. That's that's my focus. Thank you to the fans. So you'll be hitting shows in Kansas City. Of course, you'll be back in CCW. Did you talk right. to K- Did you talk to KLD? Anything about trying to come into Glory Pro? Um, I have. We have talked about it. Okay, we talked about it. Good. Um, when are you gonna make that debut down in Cooter? Um, <laughs> whenever they hit me up with their next show. So. The, I, that was so. That, that, I mean, dude, like it, like that was bad. Like that whole, the whole mm-hmm. month just started to just, just really bad. Like, um, so like the Cooter show was my car. Uh, the Cooter show or the show after that, because I was going to go to Memphis, was my car again. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was just bad. And I think the show before that was my car again, and we ended up getting that damn rental car. And this was the Glory Pro show, and the damn window busted out. Yeah, I remember the uh, lovely uh, patchwork you did on it when I left. Oh man, yeah. And then the next weekend was supposed to be. Go ahead. So then the next weekend was to film the uh, Big Leagues World podcast, Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. So on the side of all this, right? I do want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Uh, Mm -hmm. So for those that listen to this die hard, and those that know me outside of this, knows that my big studies. Besides on the tech side is uh marketing and advertising things like that, so that's why I'm very uh a very I will say judgmental but very hard when it comes to uh promoting the brand pro- promoting the uh, characters things of that and trying to move forward with it. So I try to talk to some people about some things that I think they should work on, and don't think that you're an exception to get a big league lecture. So okay. you know what my lecture for me is going to be about. Yeah, sure. What's up? No, I don't I see don't. any. I don't see any merch from you. Yeah. So should we expect to see that in the you future? Sure don't. It's a possibility. We'll see. You know, I you think wanna, you really you want some house Road merch. You got to come to the shows where I'm at. Where I'm at. You see if I got merch. <laughs> that, that's right. Plain, plain and simple. Plain and simple. You looking for house Road merch? Oh man, I could come out with some merch in a town in Iowa. You never know. 
That's right. You never know. You yeah, gotta hit them. Know. You gotta buy them you tickets gotta, and hit them shows. And, that's why. That's why. Pro, that's why every individual in professional wrestling is special. While everybody's out there got merch, House Rowling got shit. Will we have merch? You never know. You want some? Because I do want some merch. Like I do want my own merch. Like I see. I want my own T-shirt. I see you out. You people out there. But like, hey, if you're a big fan of mine, like like everybody else, you gotta follow me too. So like, is the, support is, support indie wrestling. Okay, if y'all like it and miss it that much, support us. Like we are all out here, like trying to make a living. We all we all trying to get to AEW status or WWE status or New Japan or CMWL, AAA, all that shit. The Australia, New England, all, we we all trying to get there. Support any wrestling is all I'm saying. So, Go ahead. So is the only Hollis Joe shirt the Pinnacle shirt? No. So there I, is I have I, I have one other shirt that I wear. One other shirt that I wear. Really? Uh huh. And it's just one, and I wear it. <laughs> so, you, so there's but there, there ha- there's been mo- there's been multiple pro- multiple prototypes. So okay. So multiple have you looked prototypes. at doing like a pro wrestling tea store or something like that? Nope. Cause uh. Why? Why? Do I got a fan in North Carolina that I don't know about? Hey. <laughs> let me tell you this. I talked to uh, Josh or Otis about this uh, uh, before we even did the podcast a, month, a couple of weeks before that, uh, and right. I, we, we can discuss it off air. But uh, dude, I'm telling you, man, like they uh, they pretty well try to take care of you there, and uh, you know, virtually no cost to you to do it. So okay, but yeah, we'll talk about it after the air. But I do okay, have, uh, but I do uh, have some uh, fan submitted questions. Oh yeah, sure. These are always, 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 always the most fans. endeavor, most fun part. Uh huh. Bud Burgundy, when mofo, oh, when is this happening? So who's Bud Burgundy? He wants to know when this is happening. Well, Bud, Bud I can tell you, yep. Bud Burgundy, yeah. I can tell you this is happening right now as you're listening to this. So I hope that answered your question. Thanks for oh, commenting. Oh, we were live the whole time. No, no, yeah. we don't. I, oh, no, okay. I don't oh, do live. Oh, you take. What? Okay, go ahead. Well, that's go why ahead. I commented on that earlier. But uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't do live podcasts because it seems like I thought you were ribbing me. <laughs> no, no, no. They. Uh, I don't do live podcasts on like the Facebooks and stuff like that because sometimes it can right. just get lost in the translation or not translation, lost in the lost in the shuffle oh, thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this way, yeah. if people find an episode, like if they're listening to Otis's episode. And then they want to learn more, which then I they can. See, which I didn't see. Go ahead. We don't. Well, they're not. They're not video podcasts. This. No. They're all. But uh, so like if they listen to someone's episode, then they can go to the archive, or they can go to their iTunes or their Spotify, and then they can see all of it, and it's just all right there for them to go back to back to back. Nice. And with the Facebook lives and stuff like that, you kind of lose that. Like yeah, people yeah, got to yeah, scroll yeah, through the post. Yeah. I think I you're doing it right because that's such a big hassle. I can't so, tell you how many times I'm trying to go find something and I can't find it because it gets lost in the shuffle. So you're so right. Go ahead. So our next question is from Derek, who asks, mm-hmm. what is his favorite skit done in WWE, and why is it the old day? Uh, it's not the old day skit, first off. Derek. Um, actually... Uh, my favorite skit, um, I don't do, I like, it's a whole lot, but the right now, because it's, it's good through shit right now to me, would be that Kurt Angle and Triple H and Ric Flair skit, where the motherfuckers are wooing off in the ring. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, like, because I'm thinking about it right now, like, it just came <laughs> to me, but there's a, I got a lot of favorite skits, but right now, that's just the one that I can think of off the top of my head, because it's such, that was a good, that was a good little skit. Kurt Angle had a little, uh, like, tumor in his neck, but, and it, his vocal cords wasn't as high as it used to be when he was younger, mm-hmm. you know, and when he had, when he had that losing, that loss of hair, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, he, yeah, it was just, it was just very entertaining to me to watch all that. Like, Ric Flair's getting his shit in, Kurt Angle's getting this shit, and Triple H's looking like a big dog, you know, controlling all the <laughs> shit. Like, that was a good skit. I like that. So, for those of y'all who found this episode, based off going back to the archive at BigLeagueWorld.com or on your favorite podcast platform, and uh, just kind of listening to this now for the first time, finding out about Hollister and who he is and stuff like that, 
Hollis himself has done extra work for WWE. So why don't you tell us a little bit about working for the W, the WWE, and old Mac WWE. Man. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh well, working for the WWE, it was um, uh, 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 again I've went I've, I've went to a few of those, been backstage to a few of those, and I've only been on TV of it twice. Um, but still working back there, it's it's a dream. It's really a dream. Like, you know, all the, you know, here, because, here, you know, everybody reads the damn internet these days. You know, mm-hmm. feel like you're walking on eggshells type shit. <laughs> yeah, that was an experience. That was an experience. If you were a rookie, it puts you in that, that you know, you know, grab you by the ball situation when you, you know, are confronted by some, you know, some screwed up mess because it's a company like everything else. There's some, some fuckery back there. With that. <laughs> but, but still. You know, like everything else, it's an experience. It was fun. You know, I'd love to go back. I'd love to go back. So how did you uh, how did you get in contact with them to do it to begin with? What, the first one was one of my uh, uh, first of many guest trainers, uh, Scott Vida. I'm sure he probably wouldn't want me throwing his name, putting him on blast <laughs> like that. But, but yeah, uh, he uh, got me my first shot, the first couple. Actually, okay. all of them. Cause it was, <laughs> if it, yeah, it was, it was all of them. And, um, like, he was the hookup through our training facility at the time to uh, get us that. So the first shot, shout out to Scott Light, because he's the one who got me on TV at XWC. So the next question I have is yeah. from Dalton Anthony. You ever heard of this kid? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, like, bash him into a few cars, chuck him in a trunk. Yeah, I heard about that, <laughs> Anthony, yeah. Yeah, uh uh-huh, go ahead. Dalton. My he show has, match. He, he wants to know what happened to his friend Richard Hunter. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Is he in the trunk too? I I, I killed him. Like he he he's on the like I uh, I I'll, I'll do mul- multiple fake name changes of 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 Hollis or Hollis's uh, fr- uh, former Richard Hunter friend, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. I got a box of gimmicks for it. Next. <laughs> but Richard Hunter is gone. There is no junior. <laughs> that you're aware junior, of. Don't, uh, yeah, no, junior <laughs> don't exist. <laughs> Who's your favorite opponent you've worked? Oh, dude. Um, is this in Cape or is this uh, just in general? Let's let's do let's do one in let's do one in Cape. Okay, one in Cape. Um, okay, my our favorite opponent, and he will not ever get enough praise from me is Billy Hills. He's shout out favorite. to Billy Hills. You know, shout out to Billy Hills. Like backstage, like we have you. Okay, K Fabe and, and not K Fabe because we all know that shit don't exist halfway. I'm a big believer of it, so I'm still keeping the shit. But before you know, I, during all this shit, anyway. Um. Uh, Billy backstage, um, um, uh, he did, he, he did something that I didn't expect. He, he went out of his character, uh, for what he had for the night for me. And mm-hmm. he came up to me and he asked me about it. I'm not going to say what it was, but he did something that he didn't have to do because I told him he didn't have to do it. That's his character. Don't make his money, you know? And he did it anyway. So he will, he will always get props for me for that. Uh, he know what he did. Motherfucker, but yeah, I loved working Billy Hills, and I was very, very glad that you know his last match in Cape that I was able to give him that pop. Mm-hmm. That, that I, I, uh, you know, like, and I, and I say that because the whole, the whole house row Billy Hills rivalry, we we had you know some spots planned, but it wasn't nothing that we couldn't work around. Like we worked, and the shit was over. Like mm-hmm. most, of, like again, some spots were planned, but most of that shit was working. And that's why I loved it. We were, Shout out. Bro, we were, we were out there free balling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Billy Hills. Much love, brother. Yep. Much you know. fucking love, Billy. I, I've got nothing for love for him. Uh, uh, you know, he's I love closest. I love everyone down there, though. Like, I love every, like, I love, like, I love, every, I love working everyone down there. Like, there isn't, like, a single fucking soul, but it's just a shout out to Billy Hills. Yeah, like awesome. I said, I, Billy Hills is one of the closest friends I've made to, in this whole CCW mm-hmm. endeavor. And I appreciate that, you uh-huh. know. Uh-huh. He's family, so much love to him. No, yep. your your all time favorite opponent. All time favorite opponent. Mm. 
Okay. Like me. there's a, there's a few there's a, there's a few good ones, but for the but for the sake of this for the sake of this one, I have to say Austin Lane. Okay. Because I learn I get in the ring with him and like he he he's the dude in the locker room to me. Like he's a he's the guy he's the guy you have to touch. Like, right. You gotta be able to do what Austin does, and and that's where I aspire to be. So like I, I watch I watch all his shit when I can. You know. Uh, so yeah, my all-time favorite opponent in the cage would be Austin Lane. Um, dude, I got dude. It's so many, it's so many. I can't just pick one. So where They're does where does Dalton Anthony rank in this? Oh fuck him, dead last. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't, I can't, I can't, man. The He's dude, not. He you 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 yeah, man. Like no, man, no. You you're something special, Dalton. <laughs> you're something special, Macho Man. <laughs> everybody, everybody, something special. Like everybody holds it, you know. Like we're all, you know, like dude, man, we're all fucking wrestling fans. Like if you don't like, and if you're out here doing this shit and you're in the struggle and you don't get a little sentimental or choked up about mm-hmm. it, you are in, you are in fucking human. All right, like we are all, we all who are able to go out and do this are, should be very blessed, and that's what we all are. So in, in this endeavor, so. Any match you have, go out there and enjoy that shit. Don't take it too serious. Not like I, I mean, did that's, that that's a lot. That's <laughs> not like I did in that one show. <laughs> you know, and, that, and that's not just with the wrestling business. That's a life lesson. You know, don't take it too yeah. seriously. I mean, you only got one shot at this, you know. Yeah. You get rolled with the punches, good times coming bad. But don't be them YOLO motherfuckers, though. God, I hate them motherfuckers. Don't be a YOLO motherfucker. <laughs> go live life, but don't be one of them. Oh, fuck. Is, is, is YOLO still a thing? <laughs> no. Corona is a thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't see them motherfuckers running out here, yo. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I'll, I appreciate you taking time out. Much mm-hmm. love to you. I appreciate you doing the podcast with me here tonight. I, Where can a, everybody? It was, a, it was a pleasure, man. Where can everybody find you on the social media? I barely use Twitter, but you can find me there at it's H Giro. That's I T S H G I R O U X. On Twitter, as well as Instagram, I love Instagram, um, and on <laughs> Facebook at Hollis Giro, H O L L I S space G I R O U X. And then, if you want his personal cell phone number, it is five 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 zero four twenty nine. That's the number. I don't know the rest of it, but yeah, that's where you can find me tonight. So uh, I was actually afraid you was going to pull the rub on me there when I said that, and uh, you were uh, going to uh, put out and give my phone number. I was like, ah, I see how it is. Oh, no. Oh, no, bro. So with that, style, bro. with that being said, <laughs> there's one other thing i got to talk to you about. Uh, what, we going to get ice cream? Well, there's two things. One, we still got to get that ice cream. Uh, it's actually funny. There's two people I've, got, I've still got to uh, follow up and get ice cream with, you and Amazing Maria. <laughs> so... Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Amazing she was Maria. A, okay. yeah, she's out of uh, Louisville. Oh, joy! Yeah, she uh, she uh, she came to that uh, women's show that we had here that first night before the first super show. I was still trying to get here the night before the first super show. But, well, you made you know, it there. I did. Oh yeah, yeah you did. I'm yeah, all wrestling man. I don't even remember half that shit. That's where uh, the other story was going to earlier. We were talking about, but anyways. Oh, okay. We were oh, talking from the from the beginning. That yeah. I, I fell in love with someone. Did I? Yeah, you got to keep it all full circle, man. Got to keep it all full circle. But oh, we got to yeah, talk about true. your atrocious. That's another time. My we got to talk about boy. your atrocious taste in music, dude. Don't be fucking hating on Dawkins, man. <laughs> Man, dude, I don't, don't know. be hating on Dawkins, bro. That dude, I just, I do throughout this whole like coronavirus thing, I discovered a new love for fucking Dawkins, man. I mean, like, it, it's, bad. it's bad. It's bad enough you had an original. It's bad enough you had the original love for Dawkins. Now you have a new love for Dawkins. Oh, bro, man, yep. <laughs> you need yep, to sure if is. you're you need to listen to real metal. Real metal, bro. I mean, yeah. Eh. And look, if it, look, if you can find me something that I will like, be my guest. And then you know, I like, I like, oh look, bro, I like talent. <laughs> well, I don't believe that because you like Dawkins. 
oh, bro, then, then I am so sorry to you. Our, then, 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 then my buddy, our definition of talent is two different things. <laughs> and then that country mess you was listening to the other night in the locker room. Oh, uh, the, the country mess? Yeah. Oh, solo cup? I don't know what it was. I just know it was some terrible country music. Oh, bro, let me hear some country mess. Don't be hating on country music, bro. You gotta look. I love, I like, I like music. I like music. I listen, like, as long as it sounds good to me and I can, like, I can find something to attach to, I like music. None of that, like, it, like, at the bottom of the list will be rap and hip hop, but I like music. There are some songs, but there's not, not, not too many of them. Go ahead. See, for me, the rap and hip hop's kind of like old rap and hip hop's in the middle. I'm starting to find an appreciation for the old rap, though. Like, Old three six mafia, old uh mm-hmm. Dr. Dre, old Snoop, Dude, old eight bro, ball okay, MAG. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I will tell you a funny ass story and I'll this last one, swear swear. So right before um like I I forgot what show it was it was on. We were all it was uh, you know, a lot of the K C crew, you know, Leo D, Aaron Clay, uh I forgot who else was there. I know uh the Infinite was on on that on that trip and um oh damn, who else was it? Anyway, um, um, Calvin Aldridge, he was all there too. It, it was more people there, but I can't remember. But anyway, we were all in the car, and I'm like, these motherfuckers don't think I listen to rap. Let me show them where I listen, you know, my rap music. So um, I put on um, Make Them Say, oh. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Right. <laughs> and, this is, and this is just right before Cody did it on uh, AEW. Bro, like, I mean, I, I love key pop for that because it was funny when he did it. But <laughs> that car ride was a shit because we were doing that shit for like an hour and a half. Make him say, oh. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Last, last, that was last story. Yeah. Man, not like, Master P was one of those, like, I feel like. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Uh-huh, go ahead. And he had that other song. I forgot what it was, though. The Ice Cream Man? No, it was like it's later the on. Ice Cream Man. I don't know. I don't know, man. What other song? Ooh wee. Who? It's called Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Oh, okay. I, I don't think I've ever heard it. <laughs> what? <laughs> to me, no, I thought no. it was better than Make Him Say Uh. Make Him Say Uh? No, bro. But now for no. me, it's like metal, say, uh, hardcore. It's cult classic. Uh. My, my ranking is metal, hardcore, new metal, old hip hop. And then I could do away with the rest. Yeah. Like, uh, dude, I like all that crap, man. Like, you know, classical, it could be classical, it could be, you know, again, rap or hip hop. Like, it's, like, it just depends on the song. It's, it's, it, it could be any genre. Uh, not gospel, though. That's, <laughs> I don't like that shit. The only gospel uh, I'll listen to is Christian death metal. Nope. <laughs> if I'm gonna listen to gospel music, it has to come from the church. Not no damn radio. You will not be profiting off the Lord. Not that I'm like super religious or anything, but that's just how I feel about it. Well, like I said, you need to listen to some Christian death metal then. You need to listen to mm. you some impending doom or for today. We're imp- impending doom right now. Like, yeah, impending doom. These motherfuckers can't even go to church. Celebrate Easter these days. Wait, I thought that was the big controversy is that they did go yeah, to church. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They did go to church. And didn't that one dude yeah. in Florida or somewhere like trying to mix government and religion? Huh? Y'all fucked up. That's Y'all right. Fucked up. <laughs> That's why the Constitution says separation between church and state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But wasn't it the dude in Florida that like told everybody it wasn't a big deal and to go to church? And he ended up getting the virus there's and so, died. There's so much. I think I did hear remember hearing something about that. But yeah, uh, but there's so much of it to keep up with, man. Like, people are nuts. People just keep your ass in the house, they say, so we can get this wrestling thing back on, so we can all get in the damn ring, wipe our feet, kiss this ring. Thank you. Like, thank you. I want to see some fucking fans, okay? Like, keep your motherfucking ass in the house. Really what he's saying is he wants to see me. And it's hard. You want to get some ice cream? That's right. mm -hmm. Yeah, some White Castle. I'm really, really missing some White Castle. Yeah, if you're going to get White Castle, you're going to get it from someone besides me because this stuff's terrible for you. (laughs) (laughs) But like I said, once again, thanks, Hollis, for joining us tonight on the Big Leagues World Podcast. We appreciate it. As always, thank you to the fans for listening to this. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this episode. You can find us on all your your favorite major 
platforms, including iTunes and Spotify. Uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Big Lee's World. Uh, you can shoot us an email, any questions, comments, concerns, at BigLee'sWorld at gmail.com. Make sure to rate, share, and subscribe this issue. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. Stay safe out there during this quarantine. Stay at home. Make it safe for everybody else. Help flatten the curve. And as always, two scoops of whoop, whoop, whoop. And support indie wrestling. Support indie wrestling.